Hey, what's up, everybody? Saw a few comments on my Keystone video from a few days ago. Most people are saying that it's working great for them. They're making profit. But I've seen a number of comments saying like, this strat is absolute crap. It doesn't work. I ran five maps. And I didn't make any currency. Sorry to break it to you guys, but it does work. Uh, I mean, it's exactly what I do. And if you want a very nice stash that looks like mine, I'm going to go over the strategy that I've been doing that I'm using as a foundational baseline to ensure that I'm always getting at least a few divines every single hour on top of all of the additional strats that I may be running. If you're not making at least three divines an hour, please pay close attention to this video. This isn't bait or anything. This is just the strategy that I use to make sure that I'm always making really good currency. It's very, very easy to do as long as you don't miss any of the pieces. And I just wanna help you guys out and make sure that you're getting value for the time that you're investing in the game. So anyway, let's just get right into it. With the power of the keystones that we have on the Atlas right now, especially combined with how much quant pack size and the value of rarity as well that we get these days, it is easier than ever for Elk and Go gamers to get as much, if not more, currency than they've ever gotten in the past. Now, yes, last league we did have Sentinel. I am not counting the current league mechanics. I'm just talking about baseline Elk and Go, you know, what you're able to extract out of the baseline game to the point where I am only counting things that are also valid in standard league. So this is just a standard league viable strategy. I'm not counting the lake at all. So don't compare the strategy to the insane amount of currency that Sentinel could give you last league. So what I did this morning is I rolled up 15 maps, grabbed some scarabs, and in 38 minutes, averaging 2.5 minutes per map, I ran a bunch of atolls. The footage that you see right now is me running that. As you can see, my build is not super fast. It's not a hyper-optimized MF build. It's not a bow build or anything like that. In my opinion, it's a very average speed build that should be basically baseline for any competent mapping build that you play in the game right now. The big key about everything that we're doing here is building around Wandering Path. Uh, I do strongly encourage you to watch the previous video about the keystones and how they work to, to understand what Wandering Path does. The short of it is that it disables the medium-sized notables and it doubles the value that you get from the small nodes. So the key here is that we wanna take the hat, which will give us 60% increased effect in total, 15 times four of all of the modifiers on the map. So that means if your map has like 100% quantity, that will probably go up to about 160% quantity, similar with rarity. Now the scaling there is not exactly linear. It'll work out to something along those lines. We have 12% increased quantity here, and then we have another 6% quantity and 30% rarity here. We have 150% increased rarity for items dropped by map bosses. And then I have a couple additional things here where we have 8% chance to drop additional map currency items and 8% chance to drop additional Scarab. On top of that, the really, really big key here is that we are using Searing Exarch mobs. I chose Searing Exarch mobs because they're faster. The downsides aren't as bad for my character. But other than that, if you prefer Eater of Worlds mobs, you can do that. The altars and the mobs from that are the big, big part of the currency. And that's the thing that I don't think I emphasized enough in the previous video. So you can see by taking these four nodes, we have 40% increased pack size right there. And then the maps themselves will have something like a 60% baseline pack size. With that, we do take Wrath of the Cosmos. I do encourage you. This is a node that you don't want to take if you're in hardcore. It is very, very rippy. Players take 25% increased damage from enemies for each Eldritch Altar. So if you take four Altars, that is 100% increased damage taken, which will, you know, that'll kill most hardcore characters even. However, Eldritch Currency items have a 25% chance to be duplicated and 25% chance for lesser and greater Eldritch Currency items to drop as Grand instead. Grand sell for much, much more than lessers and greaters. And that is a very big part of the strategy. On top of that, we want to take Eldritch Gaze. The cool thing is that the Wrath of the Cosmos and Eldritch Gaze nodes work whether you're doing Searing Exarch or Eater of Worlds, so that's entirely personal preference right there. But you do want to take the pack size nodes for the one that you're doing. Eldritch Gaze, Eldritch Altars have an additional downside, so you get two downsides. You know, you can get the Meteor Drops on you and Fizz's Extra Chaos something like that. So again, this makes it even rippier. This is not a hardcore strategy. 50% increased effective upsides. If it says something like Eldritch Monsters have a 2% chance to drop uh, basic currency items, that goes to a 3% chance, which is obviously really, really good. Other than that, there aren't that many small nodes that you know really work for the strategy that I was doing here. I'm not really trying to do any additional strategies here. You absolutely can build into those if you want to. You can take advantage of something like increased pack size and incursions. You can do something like increased simulacrum splinters. I took the shrine nodes because I I just find it very comfortable to have a two minute shrine on my character and just makes mapping a lot more comfortable. Uh, I did take a lot of the harvest nodes here and I would probably respec into these ones as well for just a lot more life force. Life force sells really, really quickly and it sells for a good amount. 
So Harvest is actually just greatly profitable right now. And since we can just sell Life Force instead of having to go to TFT, I would argue that Harvest is actually probably a really big upside if you never wanted to use TFT in the first place in terms of raw profitability. The one additional thing here to kind of counteract some of the downsides of taking those really, really rippy nodes is Wellspring of Creation. Monsters get a 25% less damage multiplier, which really makes mapping a lot more comfortable. Now they will have 50% more life so that T16 boss may take a little bit longer to kill, but every time that you die and then you have to portal back in, that's a couple loading screens. I would argue that that's greatly countered. Maybe takes like five to 10 more seconds on the map boss. A lot more comfortable just not die, have to load and, and you know recast your ores and everything. This is really the full meat and potatoes of where everything comes from. The one additional thing that I did do is I tossed in four really, really cheap scarabs. Elder Scarabs, I did change this last league, is you can now use Shaper and Elder Influence on top of using the altars. So this is just way more additional monsters on the map. I used Metamorph because it's just what I had. It was really, really cheap. Cartographers just to have even more map drops and Ambush because it's just what I had and it's more monsters on the map. The combined price of all of these Scarabs right now is just about four chaos. I chiseled and I elked my maps and I ran a toll because it's just what I had. It's a very comfortable map to run. On the map device, I just used the regular 8% quantity. I didn't use any crafts or anything like that. Other really, really important thing for sustaining your map drops is to do something like this with your favorites. You wanna have all but one or two of your favorites set to your favorite map that you wanna be running. And then you wanna favorite one or two connected maps to that one map. So you can see that I have a toll right here and then connected to it is Mud Geyser and Defiled Cathedral. And I have each one of those favorited once. And when you look at my map drops in the results tab, you'll see what happened here. What this ensures is it combos really, really nicely. A chance for one monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map, Mud Geyser or Defiled Cathedral. And then a bunch of these other ones is 1% chance for those map drops to be duplicated, which you can see here, I have a 33% chance for maps to be duplicated. That's just directly 33% more maps that drop. And just to really strongly emphasize how strong those those notables are. Let's take a look at this. 88% quantity, 40% rarity, and 26% pack size on the cells map. <laughs> Chose cells because I'm going to throw it in the trash. You know, we get the plus 8% quantity there. And all of these mods here will have 60% increased value. You know, this 40% monster elemental resist will have 60% more strength, which will give me more quantum, more rarity, but that can make some of those map mods extra uncomfortable. So do be very careful about that. But if we go on the map here really quickly, remember that was 88% quant. And then we look at this, that goes up to 166% quant. We straight up doubled the amount of quant here and 94% rarity. So if we do find one of those uh, God-touched monsters, this is really, really, really good. The other really important thing to know, when the monster is generated, things like the party bonus, things like the quant and rarity on the map, that is one that is locked in. So this is actually pretty much the most fundamental thing for making sure those God Touch monsters will have some pretty good drops. So it's really, really important to just always keep that in mind. Also remember we had 20% pack size, that went up to 41% pack size. That plus the 40% pack size on the altar monsters, there will be a ton of altar monsters as you saw in the footage at the beginning. So this is the first five maps that I ran. You can see that I got a moderate amount of Eldritch currency. I got six raw chaos, a ton of map over sustain, and then just a couple other random raw little things here. And then I ran 10 more maps. And then this is where you can see it really kind of coming online and all coming together. If you ever have trouble with map sustain, my recommendation would be to run a strategy like this. And within a single day, you will be overflowing with more maps than you know what to do with. And to really eke out as much value as you can from a strategy like this, I would run something like Crimson Temple because you can just sell those maps in bulk very, very easily. So without actually doing these sales, I can't really directly speak to how much this is actually moving, but we can see that Crimson Temple is selling at about 50 per divine. As you can see from the drops, this is total from 15 maps. So every 20 maps that you're running, that could that could very easily be an additional divine per hour, which is obviously really, really nice. Um, that's a really good consideration to just keep in the back of your mind. So as you can see, it's a bunch of random little stuff here, but it really does add up. This was a total of 15 maps that I ran. And if we go to excellence next, it is estimating the value of what I have here at about 550 chaos. I took out a lot of the stuff that I wouldn't even consider selling. And to me, I think it would be realistic to say that's about 500 chaos of stuff that we could very easily sell. This was a 75 chaos investment, 15 maps times five chaos. This equals out to be 28 chaos per map in pure profit. I recorded all the footage and it was at 2.5 minutes per map. Changed your results based on how quickly you can run your maps. I think that 
that I was running it at a pretty medium pace here. So, you know, you can run something like Atoll or Mesa or anything like that. This equals out to be 672 chaos divided by 210, the current insane price of divines. And this equals out to be about 3.2 divines per hour. Feel free to round this up or down however you like. I did have two raw divines and one raw exalt in my maps that I ran today. I am not counting those whatsoever. I also did get an incandescent invitation. You know, you will get that every 28 maps. So a little bit less than an hour if we're running 24 maps an hour. They're currently selling at about 110 to 120 chaos. If we average that out, that's another 100 chaos per hour. I know that this is just a very dry, very talky type of video. I don't generally like doing something like this, but I do want to make it very, very clear that I really think anyone who puts a little bit of effort, like this is... Five chaos per map. This is very, very close to just no thought elk and go. As long as you set up your maps decently, you do what I say in this video, you should be making at least about three divines an hour baseline. The other thing is, is that I totally skipped running anything external, betrayal, expedition, and I even skipped things like abyss and blight because I just wanted to go very quickly and just get through my maps. So there's a lot of additional content that you can do to layer on top of this and turn it into five, six, seven, or more divines per hour. Um, I wanted to just show something that you can do as a baseline. Really, anyone right now with just a decently competent build should be able to make about three divines an hour. Obviously, you do have to sell this stuff. Uh, I do recommend, you know, doing this strategy for a while to sell this stuff in bulk. Really save your time in, in you know, moving the product. Like, really, the changes this league, yeah, I know we lost Sentinel. Sentinel was a ton of currency. But for just regular Elk and Go gamers, there is just as much, if not more, currency in the game right now than there ever has been, minus whatever league mechanic there may be in the game. At league release, it was really, really crappy, um, but they've buffed it so many times and they've nerfed Arch Nemesis so many times that I really think the baseline currency is just fine. So if you're still playing this league and you want to make currency, please give this a shot. I want to make sure that everyone's having a ton of fun. I just want to share this information with you guys. Make sure that you can put your builds together and, and have a good time. Thank you all for watching. Huge thank you to all of the patrons, especially, especially the new ones that signed up after the last video. I appreciate the support so much. Uh, I can't say how much it warms my heart every time I see one of you guys, you know, really go the extra step to, to support and, and believe in the content that I do here. But yeah, I'm going to go mow the lawn and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye. Sir, sir, excuse me? Okay. Excuse me, are these are these big anime boobies? Oh, excuse me, is, is this profitable? Literally you? No, it's not. Is this good? You guys tell me. Is this good? <laughs> is this good? I, 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 do, I do ask that a lot.